It's just an anonymous room. There's nothing in the drawers. It should look anyway. Nothing except the Gideon Bible, which which I, of course, read religiously. <laughs> mm. You know, you know who you are, and you know kind of all about yourself. But just for day-to-day -day stuff, notes are really uh, useful. Sammy Jenkins had the same problem, but he, he really had no system. He wrote himself a ridiculous amount of notes, but he, he'd get them all mixed up. You really do need a system if if you're gonna make it work. Discount in. Natalie. My car. Teddy. You really need a system if you're going to make it work. You kind of learn to trust your own handwriting. That becomes an important part of your life. You write yourself notes, and where you put your notes, that also becomes really important. You need like a jacket that's got like six pockets in it, particular pockets for particular things. John Edward Gamble. This guy told me his name was Teddy. Don't believe his lies. You just kind of learn to know where things go and how the system works. And you have to be wary of other people writing stuff for you that is not going to make sense or is going to lead you astray. I mean, I, I don't know, I guess people try and take advantage of somebody with this condition. If you have a piece of information which is vital, writing on your body instead of on a piece of paper it can be the answer. It's just a permanent way of keeping a note. Mr. Gamble? Lenny, is that you? John Gamble? Lenny, it's Teddy. Stay there. I'll be right over. Okay. I'll be waiting. You say we talked before? I don't remember that. Yeah, but it's not amnesia. I remember everything up until my injury. I just can't make new memories. So I can't remember talking to you. What did we talk about? Oh, well, Sammy Jenkins. I guess I'd tell people about Sammy to help them understand. Sammy's story helps me understand my own situation. Well, Sammy wrote himself endless amounts of notes. But he got mixed up. Remember Sammy Jenkins. I met Sammy through work. Insurance. I was an investigator. I'd investigate the claims to see which ones were phony. I had to see through people's bullshit. It was a useful experience, because now it's my life. But when I meet someone, I don't know if I've met them before. I have to just look in their eyes and try and figure them out. I have a more graceful solution to the memory problem. I'm disciplined and organized. I use habit and routine to make my life possible. Sammy had no drive, no reason to make it work. Me? Yeah. I got a reason. I'd just become an investigator when I came across Sammy. Mr. Samuel R. Jankus. Strangest case ever. You know, the guy's a 58-year-old, semi-retired accountant. He and his wife had been in this car accident. Nothing too serious, but he's acting funny. He can't get a handle on what's going on. The doctors find some possible damage to the hippocampus, nothing conclusive. But Sammy can't remember anything for more than a couple of minutes. Can't work, can't do shit. The medical bills pile up, his wife calls the insurance company, and I get sent in. Now, this is my first big claims investigation, so I really check into it. My job taught me the best way to find out what someone knew was just let them talk and watch the eyes and the body language. If someone scratches their nose while they're talking, experts will tell you it means they're lying. It really means they're nervous. People get nervous for all sorts of reasons. It's all about context. Yeah, I was good. Sammy was my first real challenge. So good old Leonard Shelby from the insurance company gives her the seed of doubt, just like he gave it to the doctors. But I never said that he was faking. I never said that. Hmm, I don't feel drunk.
Get you some Sammy coffee. can think just fine, but he can't make any new memories. He can only remember things for a couple of minutes. He'd watch TV, but anything longer than a couple of minutes was too confusing. He couldn't remember how it began. I like commercials. They were short. Sammy, it's time for my shot. The crazy part was that this guy, who couldn't even follow the plot of Green Acres anymore, could do the most complicated things as long as he learned them before the accident and as long as he kept his mind on what he was doing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, sir, that'd certainly be in keeping with some of my own discoveries. I was hoping for a little more on the drugs angle. Will you hang on a sec? Now, the police report mentioned the drugs found in the car outside the house. The car was stolen, but his prints were all over it. Now, the doctors assure me that there's a real condition called anterograde memory loss or short-term memory loss. It's rare, but legit. <laughs> But every time I see him, I catch this look, this slight look of recognition. But he says he can't remember me at all. Now, I can read people, and I'm thinking, bad actor. So now I'm suspicious, and I'll go to more tests. There's something about the drugs stashed in the car that doesn't ring true for me. Because the police claim the guy was an addict needing money to score, which I think is bullshit, because he's not going to go breaking into places while he's still got a stash that big. Well, I think John G. left it there, or planted it there. How do you know that? Oh, shit, that's true. It fits. So he's a dealer. Hang on a sec. friends in the department, they give me a copy of it. I dealt with the police a lot in my insurance job. In my condition, it's really tough. I can't keep it all in mind at once. I have to summarize the different sections. And there's pages missing. I guess I've been trying to log them all. I don't know why these are crossed out. But they weren't even looking for John G. The stuff they found in the car just fit in with what they believed had happened, so they didn't chase any of it up. 